Many films and books have stories of giant monsters destroying cities from Godzilla to King Kong. But could this really happen? Well, there are two major problems with most of these monsters. The first relate to kind of like the gravity and the mass of the monsters. As the creature doubles in height, they also increase in width and length, meaning that the volume increases actually by eightfold. And so in relation does the mass. And in order to bear this increasing mass, the thickness of the legs and the supporting structure has to dramatically increase in thickness. This soon gets to such a large proportion that they reach a maximum size for the creature. This limit will reach quicker if it's just a normal sized animal which increases in size as opposed to a creature which is actually evolved to be very large. As the legs would not be proportionally strong enough to support the new supersized animal. There are ways in which a super large creature could grow larger in size with actually out collapsing under its weight. But even these have limits. For instance, the bones could be hollow like a bird, maintaining a lot of the strength and support without as much weight. Cavities within the body may c contain a gas like helium or hydrogen, countering the mass of the rest of the body, or the creature may spend all of its time in water, using the water to support the mass, like a whale. These factors, of course, would also limit the destructive capability of such a creature. Now, the other form of a supersized creature is often seen as that of a giant insect, and this presents even more problems than just a normal giant-sized creature. Insects don't actually use lungs to breathe, but instead use tiny holes along the side of their body called spiracles, which are connected to tubes which reach into the body where gas exchange can take place near the body cells themselves. Some insects actively facilitate this exchange by muscular contraction of the body, which just kind of squeezes the body in and out. However, even with this assistance, the process is dependent upon diffusion of the gas into the body. The cells, in order to function properly, need to be fairly close to the spiracles or the tubes to get an adequate supply of oxygen. This sets an upper limit to the size of insects, which is the, why the largest insects are slow-moving beetles which can conserve oxygen, or stick insects with long, thin bodies and limbs where the oxygen can still make it all the way to the cells. Either way, unless the insect developed a new way of absorbing oxygen, a super large insect is just totally impossible.